IQ season four finale, episode twenty-five. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm glad that they, <laughs> they give me the chance to relive this. Winning on a block, blocking a quick. Same way they they lost to Al Josai and. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of perfect. Kageyama and Hinata together. There's no getting it. Your fate is sealed. <laughs> I was so excited last time, I forgot to drink the tears of the quiet Inarazaki fan section. Definitely gonna enjoy that this episode. Also, I love the flash to we don't need the memories. That philosophy is sort of what ran its course in Inarazaki's loss, it feels. It's not just the present. God, this show is so good. Like, it's hard to even describe the fullness of it. There are so many things that are important at once. They're not discouraging the focus on the present and the joy of the game, the passion, the experimentation. That's all a very big part of Carsono as well. But as I was saying in a previous video about how Carsono has what they have, but just a little bit better, a little bit more advanced. What Karasuno has, I think one of the, the key things they're building on is legacy. I think for Karasuno, the past very much informs them as well as living in the moment and being present and enjoying the game, having the spirit as represented by Hinata. It's almost like this perfect blend of characters that represent the various elements of the philosophy that are needed, where you have people like Hinata and I would say Kagame as well, just right there. You know, they're the people that never gave up. Hinata has no emotional obstacles and they're literally newcomers, right? They're literally new. Then on the other hand, you have the old guard, the people who were there when there was no hope they were not on the on the national stage or championship stage they fought for a belief they built step by step they have experience they have the perspective of their history and that also works for the whole team together because this is not their first tense match right and they they draw on that they very much use their memories that they they need to give them that foundation and that confidence and then from that they're building and playing and living in just pure joy of the game it's another example of this show's genius in having really robust concrete themes that are applicable to all of life but also serve the function of making their win satisfying and and realistic and i gotta give it to this season and i think again reasons he bias season four as a whole is the most comprehensive from episode one of the season two i'm guessing it'll continue this episode of being just a fully realized vision of theme also great choice having that be reflected through his eyes Very high scoring game, as usual. Man, the, I don't even know how to get, put words to what I'm feeling watching the two of them block that shot and then stand there gasping for air side by side. They are true comrades in arms. That's a bond that just transcends all the superficialities of the relationship, all the bickering. Remember they were, when they're at each other's throats? That has such a different color in hindsight. When you think about what they were going through, what they've been through, and where they've gone. It's really sad that there's going to be no more HQ for the foreseeable future. I don't know how to... Haven't really... Hasn't sunk in yet, really. Episode 25, The Promised Land. They made it. Show Inuzaki's fans. Show Inuzaki's fans. Show them. <laughs> I must drink their tears. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, well deserved. Look at Suki, just dead. One of the most satisfying ep moments of the last episode, among many, was Suki diving for that ball, nearly collapsing into Kageyama as well. <laughs> Monsters. Monsters. You know what? I think I'm going to go back, actually, because I really want to remember what, what the monster reference was. I feel like it's important. I feel like it was maybe in episode three. Yes, it was Tendo who called the monsters first, comparing them to Ushiwake himself, which is interesting. He, Tendo, saw, he understood in all his craziness, because real recognizes real, I guess. And he was referring to both Kageyama and Hinata. So that's some foreshadowing there. On that note, and I want to talk about this later, but is this not, in some sense, a victory over Ushiwaka? I mean, Ushiwaka, amazing. Great. In the same category. Very, at least initially, critical of Hinata. But I think, despite the controversy, apparently, about not his decision to crash the camp. I think the season bore out the fact that he was right. You know, again, I think it's one of those things that's multifaceted. What Hinata did worked. I mean, we clearly see the result in this game of the training camp. It's so palpable. But his critics were right in their advice that you need to start with structure and need to build up. I guess I would say overall, they did him a favor and they, they handled it right by, despite their objections, allowing it to happen and then trying to be constructive and useful on top of that by saying, all right, you're here, do what you got to do. Don't get lost in your own insanity. And that seems to have borne fruit for Inata in championship game winning ways. This is a beautiful moment of the team hug. I want them to hug Suki too, not that he would like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your future opponents, most likely. I have so much more respect for this team, though, than I did when the, this arc started. Let's say I have the, the least amount of animosity towards them as an opponent team out of the big three. My animosity is reserved for the fans. <laughs> it would appear. They're really going to enjoy this when they recover from death. <laughs> of course, of course, they're bickering over who it was. We all know it was both of them in so many ways. 
急にすみません。アナバラですが、えっと。How does this coach feel? He looks pretty good. He looks pretty calm faced. Maybe he's grown. <laughs> That's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's only. We're like not very far into the tournament. <laughs> oh my god, thank you, Hinata, for, for seeing me. I feel so、uh, validated. This is becoming like a fixture of the show. See you at the top. I mean, all things considered, they took that very gracefully. Even more respect for them. It's obvious, right? You can tell so much about someone by the way they lose, as well as the way they win. And not just how they lose, but how they lose something they really covet. In ways I, I deeply feel, this kind of experience where you have an opponent, a, a really great opponent, this might sound sappy, but win or lose, you, you maybe have achieved something of great value on both sides, which is you're in an alliance with people now. As long as you're not destroying each other, right? Like if it's contained to sports, you enter this pocket of existence that only you and another person or a small group of people share. That cannot be put into words, cannot be understood by other people. And those people live in your hearts forever. Even without contact, you, you have like a psychic link. You have a bond that you can, you can draw on that gives you strength. A lot of the opponents say the same thing when they lose. You know, I'll see you again. You know, I'll see you at the top. We don't really know the circumstances. We don't know if they ever will meet again in, in competition, although it's possible and likely. But it has a bigger meaning as well, to me at least, which is that we're forever linked. We always have this, if that makes sense. And to me, it feels good. It feels like a sign of support and encouragement, respect and camaraderie that can potentially extend for. A lifetime. Unfortunately, I never participated in team sports on any official level, but there are people with whom I've shared initially great rivalry and then tremendous respect and friendship. For example, I mentioned a story about how there's a, a good friend of mine. The first time we met, we had a fist fight over a girl. This is like just after high school. And from that, we went on to have so many memorable adventures that just thinking about it fills me with a sense of pride and strength and warmth that transcends physical distance. And it's true of more than rivalry or competition. I mean, I feel that with a great deal of my friends with whom I've gone through things. I even feel that way about certain ex girlfriends, you know, like. My ex girlfriend and I were very adventurous. We had so many just insane experiences together, multiple near death experiences, even hazardous situations abroad that we survived. And, like, despite the breakup and the fact that we'll probably never talk again, <laughs> I still feel like that bond, you know, and it's a good feeling. Shout out to Tanaka. That's so humble and, and generous. Yeah, they, they showed up. But this is the house that Carson built, you know? They didn't have this in the beginning, especially the seniors, Senpai. How did he hear that from all the way up there? All right, there's a little bit of redemption for the crowd. Their lowest moment was booing their own team. That's a very tough concept. Watch them switch sides to be Hinata and Kagama fans. About Kita, as I, as I mentioned, he bears a stunning resemblance philosophically to one of my best friends. One thing I think is different, though, is that I think Kita needs to play a more active role. People I know in his camp, there are counter forces because they don't want spotlight, they don't need attention because they're kind of their own self sufficient, self generating source of energy and motivation. That being said, I feel like they also are natural conquerors. They, they take the lead just because they realize it's the best way, you know? <laughs> Uh, because they see things people don't. Kita's a, a great guy. I mean, I think it might have made a huge difference if he played a more active role and was more vocal. I think that's one thing that separates him and Daichi. Daichi and him are not exactly the same, but they, I think they both kind of are on the same end of a spectrum where they are very like feet on the ground, plant your roots, take things one step at a time, and believe good things will follow. But Daichi, is, his presence is very strong, very felt on the court, even in silence. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's gonna sting. More aggressive. Interesting. Yeah, as a view, there are no losers here in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> It was working really well. Yes, that is exactly right. Yeah, it's one of those things where, like, they didn't lose. Carson won. He's got different priorities, and he's saying what I'm basically what I'm trying to say is that they won in a very key sense. Of course, it's still a game with a binary outcome. Very. Kita.
It just means so much to them coming from him. But he's 100% right, as, as always. <laughs> as I've said many times during this reaction series, there are many games, and you can lose a small game but be on the way to win the bigger game. About them picking the absolute worst two people to, to try the quick against, that's so real to me too. There's something interesting where you having a strength also makes you the most aware of your corresponding weakness. I had this thought yesterday because I was watching a video on how introverts have a certain natural advantage because they, they keep their thoughts inside, they keep their plans inside, and that allows them to harvest energy, whereas people who talk too much, they get positive reinforcement, and that kind of gives them the dopamine hit that they need, and it cancels motivation. And I was thinking, that's interesting because I hear a lot of introverts, especially extreme introverts, talk about working to be more social. As a very strong extrovert myself, I'm very aware of the weaknesses of extroversion. So it's interesting to me to hear that. Like for one, I need contact with people more than the average healthy human being. And I like that about myself and I think it serves me well, but there is a, a, a negative aspect of that, which is that hard to explain, but I tend to overextend myself. There's something about being too available or too eager to talk or establish contact or, or just reach out for anything that other people can misinterpret as like desperation, maybe because it is desperation of a kind. Introverts may have to force themselves to do that and overcome learning curves in doing so, but there's also a natural strength and aloofness. You know what I mean? Point is, nobody would be more aware of the weaknesses of the quick than Hinata and Kageyama as the, the sole or main perpetrators of it, especially given the fact that they've lost that way before. <laughs> or finish your drink, you gotta pick one. They're just done. Yeah, he was tripping all over himself towards the end. There's no doubt that they gave, like, people say 100%, but they gave 100%. Well, well, he's the sun. He's a he's a never-ending source of energy. Yep. Speaking of moments, Suki would know about that too. I'm glad they used that terminology. And Suki was there at the training camp. He saw the whole thing more than anyone. It's a clear victory for Hinata, but you gotta respect and love Suki and see it as a victory for him as well in the moment because he made that moment possible. He trusted Hinata despite his criticism, like I was saying before, that Hinata would be there and understand and be able to do it without really that much proof of that. It was like a total leap of faith that paid off. Now we get to find out a little bit more about our future challenges. Nobody was watching you. Wow, the amount of emotional management that they have to do for Bokudo. <laughs> Save some room for self management. Kido would be proud. It happens. Oh no, she's gone too deep. <laughs> she's, he's created a monster. What started as a romantic bonding experience has, has turned evil. Wow. Oh yeah, they lost to Nekoma in the OVA. Especially coming off the high of that win. Ouch. Damn, look at us having fans all of a sudden. Like, not just our school. Well, that was surprisingly relevant to that previous conversation. Watch them. I'm expecting them to show <laughs> Oikawa for no reason. Oh, we're getting coverage. Yes, that is accurate. Yes, they're not getting some much deserved coverage. They better go through everyone, every player. Cancel the next news segment. So you're not even watching. This is something to archive and save. Someone better be recording this. That's nice for her. <laughs> I mean, gotta get views. Maybe I should put more Shimizu on my thumbnails. <laughs> you tell how much he loves them. There are going to be a lot of people suddenly watching Karasuno footage. A lot of it. Karasuno it does sound a little bit conciliatory. Uh, it feels like he's, he doesn't expect much, many more. Oh, okay. Odd. Oh, 
あいつサインとか考えるタイプじゃないだろうただの証明 Let me get more valuable 冷静って言葉に一番遠慮そうなのにさ冷静っつったら月島 I like how it's good to see the team doing what we all do あと今日はひなたのレシーブないやービビった It's more than just his receive is that and setting the pace and also his foot save his numerous points his enthusiasm in the huddle like saving their saving them from that slump 負けたくない対戦相手には当然負けたくないけどさあいつらにも負けたくないそれです One of the funniest things about the previous game was that a certain key point Kageyama stopped competing with Inurizaki and started competing with Hinata Maybe they all did in a certain sense in terms of the energy But the Senpai are perhaps not giving themselves enough credit because they're a pivotal role in it as well There is no Hinata and Kageyama succeeding without them It seems to be two halves of a whole What the hell am I looking at? That scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Was that intentional? Oh, it actually, okay. It is what I thought. <laughs> Just for Hinata. <laughs> Didn't need that. This is definitely going to be TMI. Just for fun. When I was in Japan, a friend of mine took me to explore Akihabara. And there are just a ton of these huge buildings full of anime and game merchandise. One thing that apparently there's a huge market for is X-rated anime-inspired content. Browsing some of that for fun, I noticed that there are preferred pairings. Can you guess what couple is most commonly paired together or frequently paired together? Answer, at least from what I saw, Hinata and Sugawara. <laughs> Cat is lurking. I know it's not yet animated, but I feel like the next moment will be experienced by this guy. They beat number one and number two. Never beat number one and number two? That being said, it doesn't mean that Karasuna will beat them. Sometimes there's like a... That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, there's a triangle thing going on. You never know. <laughs> no mercy. Just out for blood. Good. In a way, that's respect for your opponent. Look, I missed something significant there. Uh, who are these people again? <laughs> Alright, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit confused by that. Not sure what the significance of their meeting is. No, this is kind of a goodbye for a while. He still can't sleep. This guy's wired. What a perfect ending. Hinata with his eyes wide open at the end. And they're really going harder than the coma stop. This is predestined, it feels. It's interesting because it seems like this clip show in the credits was designed to preview what's coming next, build hype for their, their matchup. I almost wish they took a victory lap for season four because what an amazing season. There's so much they could do. I mean, not that it really matters. Yes, and there's an epilogue. Inject it right into my veins. Okay, this makes more sense, yeah. So much history here. And another epilogue, epilogue, epilogue.俺がやろうと思ってできなかったことをさせようとした。でもある時、奴らはどう考えてるのか気になった。奴らは俺じゃねえし、俺の駒でもねえ。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> <laughs> Great shot too. I think that also is a nice full circle for Ukai. One of his worries in the beginning of the season was that he wasn't just repeating the mistakes of Shiro Torizawa's coach, just doing everything they can to win at the expense of letting the, the players grow organically, naturally come into themselves. But he did that and it paid off. I like a lot of things in the show. There are leaps of faith required. It's like the closer you get to just real, authentic, repeatable, pure motivations, the more you can sort of just lean back and trust that things will end up where they should be, regardless of any particular outcome. I guess one key example of that is just letting Hinata participate in the training camp. They were critical of him, yeah, but you know, on net, my feeling about it is that they were supportive with parameters, you know, with healthy guidelines, like a good parent or mentor would. In hindsight, after finishing season four, Hinata's decision, though controversial, seems to be the right one to me. It was not perfect, but you know, one of my favorite sayings is the perfect is the enemy of the good. He just has this burning passion in his heart as the son that he is. He has intuition and instinct for, for what he needs, and he didn't even fully understand it as often we don't. It manifests more as a compulsion, and that compulsion is dangerous and it, it will wreck you in certain ways. And it's just kind of a sacrifice you have to make to the gods, you know, like, okay, I'm gonna get destroyed for a little while. It's not gonna work out the way I think it's gonna work most likely, but there's a reason why it's calling me. And you take a leap of faith and you let the experience, you let the universe shape you 
so that you're more aerodynamic, you know, you're, you're whittled away by the, the realities of life that hit you. But that only happens if you're willing to put yourself into that, into the field of play. Nothing is getting whittled down in a vacuum, you know, just staying complacent, not unchallenged, safe. This season did such a fantastic and comprehensive job covering the, the full spectrum of that in, in all its reality because it didn't favor one or the other. I mean, you have both sides and you end up seeing them as a whole and that whole is represented by Karazuna as a team. Hinata is right, Kita is right. And to his credit, actually, I think Kita recognizes that. We've seen that in some of his speeches about the, the Mia twins. It's so endlessly complex. It's almost impossible to find that perfect line, that perfect point between stability, balance, structure, and like just creativity, freedom, passion, risk. Like I said previously, I think I'm much more aligned with Hinata. My weakness has always been a lack of structure, the desire to skip steps, seeing a million shiny objects lying around and trying to pick them all up in scattershot fashion. And it's amazing. There's an amazing side to that. There's so many things about my experience, my life that I, I cherish and don't think I would have had without that. There are also obvious weaknesses. Speaking about knowing your weaknesses through your strengths, right? Like it's very hard for me to build really really huge things. I've never won a, an award. You know, I've never reached the pinnacle of anything. It's like jack of all trades, master of none. That's partly why in March Comes In Like a Lion, if any of my patrons have watched that reaction series, I was existentially threatened by the Burning Fields character who devoted his entire life, body and soul, despite all sacrifices, to one pursuit and reaping the highest accolades of that. And I know people who are very much the embodiment of the process over results thinking, and they absolutely crush it and they reach the, the top of their field and everything they do is a success, almost to godlike levels, it seems to me. But it's also more routine, it's more predictable. And interestingly, people I, I know who are composed that way often tell me that they don't really experience uh, like highs and lows. They're, they're kind of more stable, more constant, though that's maybe a overgeneralization. I'm not sure how true that is across like a large population of people. What's so cool about Karasuno is how they, they all complement each other and fill in the gaps. But at the same time, there are also commonalities that are kind of universal to all of those personality types. And I think those are eliminating the obstacles, especially the emotional ones. Putting yourself on the field, fighting, battling, working, despite your fear, despite your anxiety. Even if you don't believe at all you can succeed. One of the most groundbreaking concepts for me is that I don't need to believe in myself to succeed. I mean, it can help a lot. It's really powerful if you believe in yourself like Hinata. In the absence of that, you can still crush it if you just like do it, you know? That's a skill that can be learned and developed. The Karasuna members have their moments, they have their mini meltdowns, but it never grips them. It never possesses them the way it would most people. They recognize what they're experiencing and then they are able to either focus on something else or just do what they have to do or focusing on something higher than their anxiety, more noble than their anxiety that gives them more strength. Another obstacle shattering weapon is their ability to withstand pain. Think about Daichi, right? Think about Daichi just living in this shadow of a team for years. No one believing in them, people calling them the fallen crows, potentially embarrassing himself. No one supports, but he, with help of course, built this into what it is. The newcomers experienced pain in the form of loss, but it didn't destroy them, it made them hungrier. Losing to Josai was one of the best things ever happened to them. And it's so clearly demonstrated by the fact that they won this game the way they lost to Aobajosai, among countless other reasons why that was a significant match. Hanada and Kagama also were able to experience the pain of letting go of their best weapon temporarily when they relearned the quick, even coming to blows over it. But with the benefit of like a little bit of abstraction and time and dedication and work, it helped them rise to greater heights than they ever could have reached had they just kept on plugging. I love this season's re-exploration of the concept of genius. And it's something I don't or haven't previously seen recognized, I don't think, that there is a skill to, let's call it, just living through experimentation in a very significant way. While you can level up and you can improve your skills, you can't really change your base stats. Like what you're born as is largely what you are. And that's kind of that in, in key ways. Like for example, height. And speaking of obstacles, that is a major one for some people. Like there's this feeling of, well, this is what stats I need. This is my destiny given my upbringing. And I don't want to write that off entirely. Like there's definitely something to circumstance. There's something to physical ability in sports, for example. Example, although there, there are just countless examples throughout all of life. But I think a, a great takeaway from the show connected to the concept of genius is, okay, that being what it is, what do you focus your energy on? There's the famous prayer that most people know that's something like, God, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the strength to change what I can change, and the wisdom to know the difference, which is very connected to this idea, right? It's like, okay, you are what you are. Given that, how do you maximize what you could be? Not even in opposition to what you naturally are, but like a, a, in harmony with what you naturally are. To be your highest self, let's say, your fully realized self, following your destiny that is somewhat, at least in some part, naturally made. I believe in destiny, not as a cosmic force, but as just a, a cause and effect thing of how you come into this earth and what you experience when you're young. It's probably going to be a combination of your natural aptitudes, the pain you experience in life and wanting to get away from it, and the things that bring you joy 
that you want to follow and the meaningful gifts you can contribute. Given all that, there's no time, there's no point to lament the things that are unchangeable. Much more useful, it seems to me, is giving things your full heart, your full attention, approaching things with love, with open eyes, with passion, and hopefully with some fun and some enjoyment, you know, like, like Hinata and Kagama. And have experienced, though it's always a work in progress, that life is a playground. You know, it can be a real playground if your immediate needs are met and all that's left is kind of the spiritual, the experiential. Man, the world is just open and often Ter almost terribly and scarily, but also optimistically, the biggest obstacles are, are probably you. You know, it's probably your own fears, expectations, demons that are not really us, but but grip us that have formed through experiences and natural pain in life. And to that, I feel Haikyuu provides an answer, despite being primarily focused on volleyball. It's incredibly easy to say. It's <laughs> feels sometimes impossible to do. The gap between the thought and the action is so vast, but I think if we find ways to eliminate those obstacles, to eliminate those headwinds, or in absence of that, to act through them, perhaps also by focusing on a higher ideal or the highest ideal that is stronger than any of the fear, you will blow past not only other people and the world's expectations of you, but critically your own expectations of yourself. There's this idea of believe in yourself and succeed, and there's really something powerful about that, but I think it, there's also something limited about that, which is that it seems to predicate belief, whereas while belief is, is a great tool for power. It also can be an obstacle if you're waiting for <laughs> belief, you know, you're waiting to believe in what you can do before you do it. Hinata is kind of the ideal, you know, he really is the sun. He shines the brightest in that he, he just doesn't have those obstacles really. I mean, he does. He experiences pain, right? But he's able to convert all these things, all these negative things into power and energy. One thing a good friend of mine said that stuck with me forever is that negative emotion is a powerful wind when it's at your back. And I think Hinata embodies that really well. But overall, he's this abundance of passion and joy, this wellspring of positive desire to immerse himself in what he's doing. And you watch him and you feel like that strength will transcend any weakness. Approaching things with true love, this unquittable spirit will push you way out of your skis. And so you'll you'll be in danger at times, but there's no way you don't figure it out. There's no way it doesn't catch up. And I think that's largely the story of season four where Hinata is just way ahead of himself. I mean, he just has this, this love, you know, he's got this fire and he didn't have the skills, but because of that fire in season four, his skills catch up because they have to catch up because that's what it takes to get to where he wants to go. And I won't even make the claim that given that, he'll be able to be the best volleyball player of all time. There are some parts of that that are out of his control. But one thing I can say with confidence is he will be the best possible volleyball player he ever could be. And he will go as far as poss he possibly could, way farther than anyone would ever expect just looking at him. And that's already been borne out. And he will live in glory through that, even if his thirst will never be fully quenched. Like I've said before, I think the ending of the show will almost certainly be him on the court having won like a huge championship, saying, I want one more, you know? It's such a beautiful show. One thing I've seen reflected a lot in comments is that over time, people don't start out with Hinata as their favorite character, but then watching, he becomes their favorite character. And man, if that doesn't match exactly what I just said, right? He's just there at the origin, at the source, and all things will follow from that, whatever that thing is. It's interesting how certain shows parallel each other so well. I think that's because they're hitting on similar objective truths. Like, for example, Vinland Saga and Attack on Titan are very closely paired in what they're focusing on. It's hard to talk about one without talking about the other. I feel similarly about IQ and My Hero Academia, not just because of the music, and I also think the English voice actors are the same for Deku and Hinata, but whatever words you would use to describe it, it's that same essence at their core for both Hinata and Deku, from which all things seem possible, or their greatest potential will certainly be realized, where there's no waste and human spirit is maximized to its full potential. I mean, it's such a beautiful show. I'm talking a lot about Hinata. I could talk just as much about like, any other character, really. I just think Hinata is kind of the, the poster boy of like what is really important from what things do all other things flow. Total segue, random thought. I just realized that I'm going to have a hard time rooting against Nekoma because that means partly rooting against their coach, who's one of my low-key favorite side characters. Though, I'm sure he'll just be happy with the game, no matter the outcome because that's the kind of person he is and that's why I love him. So that's the end of IQ for now, unfortunately. I think it goes without saying that it vastly exceeded my expectation. You would not expect what IQ is when you hear that it's a sports anime. It just transcends sports. It's not about sports. It's about sports, but it's not about sports. It taps into the universal in ways that are applicable to anything. It's a show that I'll take with me forever, even not knowing, you know, the outcome of future seasons. It, it kind of doesn't matter, even though I can't wait to see where it goes from here. And I'm sure it'll, it'll continue to deliver. Like, I really want to see him at the end of his journey. He'll be a god among men. Predictions for future seasons. I think it's, it's almost inevitable that Carson beats Nakoma and goes on to face Bokuro's team. There's just so, so many clues for that. I imagine that would be the championship. And I think they win. I mean, I'm actually more confident about their win going forward than I am about their win over Inarizaki. I think they've slayed their biggest giants, you know, and perspective, as long as they don't get overconfident and sloppy, which I don't think is their character, they rise above and they, they conquer this tournament, exceeding my wildest hopes and dreams for the seniors. I was already satisfied with the seniors beating <laughs> Alpajosai and just getting to this stage, but man, would that be great? Do I dare reactivate my hope and dream 
games for them. I gotta give a huge thank you to everybody who recommended the show. It's been recommended to me for a very long time. I'm so happy I finally got a chance to watch it. Can't wait for future seasons. Thank you to all patrons for all the support for making these videos, all videos possible. Could not do any of this without your support. Long overdue shout out to those who joined the top tier on Patreon. Nicholas Webb, Ice Cream M, Jacob Serpico, Schiffer, Hal Thatch, and Sobert. Thank you to you. Thank you to all patrons again. Thank you to everybody for, for watching and for following the Haiku series for all your great insight and perspectives and Japanese translations and music analysis, interpretations of the characters, favorite moments, insanely deep analysis. It's been an absolute pleasure not just watching the show, but also discussing it. So thank you to everyone again. Look forward to seeing you very soon for, oh, Q&A coming soon. Looking forward to seeing you for that. Haiku in the future. And next show in this time slot is yet undetermined. <laughs> but Hunter Hunter very soon.